direct memory access, or DMA. DMA is an important concept uh, in the domains of computer systems and also embedded systems. We oftentimes deal with a big chunk of data rather than individual bytes or words. And we need to store such data in buffers. And that's what we call buffering, uh, which is to temporarily store data in memory before processing. And data accumulated in peripheral commonly buffered. Let's say you have a, a, a networking device, a NIC card, and you receive network data from the wire or from wireless uh, connections. And these packets will be stored on the NIC device and eventually have to be processed by the main processor. So there has to be some data movement. We uh, have to um, move data from the peripheral device to the main memory for the processor to process. And we could handle this with ISR. Uh, we can store um, and uh, um, move individual bytes like we did in the previous two examples, process them and you know, maybe uh, store the updated data to a different place. But when you do this, uh, you have to use instructions to do it. And the regular program will have to wait. DMA direct memory access is to make that process more efficient. It will separate uh, the movement from the main processor. The main processor will do its own thing during the main program, whereas the um, DMA controller will relinquish the control and um, uh, relinquish the control of the system bus so that the DMA controller can do the movement. Let me show you uh, again, the, using this diagram, uh, we wanna show you the activities of both the main processor and the, um, um, the case the DMA controller. But first, uh, this is the memory transfer without DMA. Uh, let me jump to the next slide. So we're using a vector to interrupt. Uh, you see that we have the main program is being executed and we have data uh, that's arriving and we have an interrupt asserted. We have interrupt acknowledgement. So peripheral will send uh, a interrupt um, vector number 16. And using that, the microprocessor will find uh, where the ISR is, which is address 16. It'll read data, modify data, and uh, write the data to address 0001. So now it's different from what we saw before. In this case, what we wanna do is to move the data from the peripheral to memory. And memory is addressed uh, in units of bytes. So we have this byte and next byte and so on. So we may have a thousands, you know, millions of bytes uh, in here. Um, so when the ISR is being um, executed, um, the P1 will deassert the interrupt and then the data transfer will happen. So we'll, the microprocessor will copy data from the peripheral to internal register and another copy. Now in this case, we're copying again, but we will move the pointer to the next location. As we already read the first byte, so this is gonna be a, the second byte or word and then so on. So we do this continuously and we will um, you know, do many times until we finish transferring all the data. And after that, the ISR returns and then we will have the microprocessor executing the main program again. Okay, so what you noticed was when we move the data, we have to use actual 
uh, instructions, we're going to have the microprocessor, the main microprocessor to perform the move operation. Here is the case we, when we have a DMA controller. So immediately you see there are three things coming to play. We still have the main processor and we still have the peripheral device, which is re to receive data. And now we have a DMA controller. Um, instead of reading this diagram, I'll just show you the animation. So first, if you look at this diagram, we still see the microprocessor here. We still have the data memory. We still have the peripheral device. But now we have a uh, actual hardware, which is the DMA controller. The DMA controller is like a separate smaller processor. It's a hardware chip. And it connects to the microprocessor and it connects to the peripheral. In itself, it has a few things. Uh, this address 001 and this address 8000. In terms of signals, it has request acknowledge, and here is the DMA request, DMA acknowledgement. And for between DMA controller and the peripheral, we have a request and an acknowledgement. And inside the program, inside the memory, we have the main program. Here, we don't have an ISR because with DMA, we are not really doing interrupt service routine anymore. And we'll see how we actually gonna do the data movement. So at the very beginning, the microprocessor still executes its main program um, and it has already configured its DMA control registers. Now this step was not shown here how exactly, but there are ways to talk to the microcontroller like you talk to the peripherals. So the microprocessor will, before everything, will initialize these registers. These registers are related to where we want to copy the data to and also where the data is coming from. Like this is the destination address and this is the source address. So P1 receives input data in a register of the address, uh, 8,000, uh, we saw, saw before. And then P1 asserts request to request servicing by DMA controller. And then DMA controller asserts the acknowledgement. I'm sorry, DMA controller asserts the DMA request to request control of the system bus. So this control signal is to tell the microprocessor that um, I, as a DMA controller, I would like to use your system bus, which is this part. This system bus is, there's just one set of system bus. Everybody is connected to this system bus. Microcontroller, DMA controller, P1, memory. So there gotta be some um, master to perform the control so that we can start doing data transfer. Typically, is the micro, microprocessor um, does the, all these controlling to send out addresses and then move data around. What we're trying to do here as the DMA controller, it tries to say, okay, can I use your system bus? The microcontroller can say no, but if it has no other reasons, it will agree. So the next thing you will see is the microcontroller sees this DMA request, which was asserted. It will decide to grant that access. So it will release system bus and assert this DMA ACK signal. So what really this microprocessor does is to put all of its signals on high impedance state so that it essentially isolated itself from the system bus. 
So as a result, we will have to, you know, depending on what the microprocessor will do in the next time, when it continues the uh, instruction execution, it may go forward if the instruction only use data inside the microprocessor. So let's say move R0, R1. So which means we're gonna copy the data from one register to another register and maybe do an addition onto registers. If it does all these things without needing accessing any of these uh, other um, memory location, it can proceed. If the microprocessor needs to access any of these memory locations, it will have to wait because the microprocessor, once it released the control of the system bus, it should not really access the system bus. So it's possible that the microprocessor will stop. So for the DMA controller, it's good news that it will get the access to the system bus. It will acknowledge to the peripheral, basically telling the peripheral that, hey, you know what? We got access to the system bus and now we can do all the transfer we need. So it will read data from the peripheral to its internal register and copy that value to the destination location. Now, the eventual result is the same. The new data is gonna be copied to this memory location. But you see the major difference is the microcontroller, the microprocessor here is out of the picture during that data copy process. That's good news, believe it or not. This microprocessor can execute whatever instruction it has so all these can be executed while this data copying is taking place. And even better news, if we need to copy instead of one byte, if we need to copy a thousand bytes or a million bytes, all this will be done by the DMA controller. So you have a counter here that will say, okay, copy the next 1000 bytes. So we'll be copying the next 1000 bytes and you know, filling up these memory uh, locations. And in that case, of course, you need to update these uh, address uh, by incrementing them, uh, but that's a different story. So once the data copying is done, it will deassert the DMA request uh, and also acknowledge uh, the handshake with uh, P1 uh, to say, okay, I'm done with the copying, you know, to tell the P1 that, you know, all the data you have have been copied and also to tell the microprocessor that, hey, I'm done using your system bus and you are free to take it back. And you are free to take the system bus back, uh, which, you know, the microprocessor will be happy to do. And then we go back to the normal operation. 